We're in Amman for one day before heading home. Amman is the bustling capital city of Jordan, its largest city and the country's economic, political, and cultural center. With a population of 4 million, it's the largest city in the Levant and the fifth largest city in the Arab world. We start our exploration where it all started, the Amman Citadel sits atop one of Amman's seven hills. Amman has had three names through its history. Rabath Amman was his first name when it was the capital of the Ammonite kingdom in the Iron Age after 1200 BCE. Around 260 BCE, Ptolemy II Philadelphus ruled the Ptolemaic kingdom in Egypt and the Levant. He renamed the city Philadelphia after himself. In the 630s CE, the Rashidun Caliphate conquered the region from the Byzantines and renamed the city Amman. The most prominent Roman era ruin on the citadel is the Temple of Hercules. According to the inscription, the temple was built by Geminicus Marcianus, who was the governor of the province of Arabia from 162 to 166 CE. The temple housed a colossal statue of Hercules, which was probably destroyed in an earthquake. All that remain of the statue are three fingers and an elbow, but based on these pieces, the statue was over 39 feet tall. During the Byzantine period from the 5th to the 7th century, many Roman temples were converted to Christian churches. They had a characteristic basilica floor plan. The Umayyad Palace is a large complex built in the first half of the 8th century. This building is a restored entrance chamber. During the Umayyad period, Amman was the administrative center and the governor's residence. This building was built on the foundation of a Byzantine church, which gave the hall its cruciform plan. In 1988, a modern wooden roof was added so that the building could be used for cultural events. This is the reconstructed east gate of the Umayyad era mosque. In 1951, the Jordan Archaeological Museum was opened on the citadel. I found this small but high quality collection to be the most interesting part of our visit to the citadel. These statues date back to about 9,000 years ago. They were discovered in the Amman area. They're the earliest large scale representation of the human form. These small pottery vessels date to the Iron Age, 1200 to 539 BCE. The unusual pottery coffins date from the 13th to the 7th century BCE. The collection includes many heads and other artifacts from the Greco-Roman period. Soapstone cooking pot is from the Umayyad period, 8th century CE. This intricate design is a model for a ceiling in a palace in Jericho, 8th century CE. Window screen is also intended for that same palace. This interesting artifact is a Mamluk cannon, circa 1501. The suit of Ottoman chain mail. Amun was destroyed by earthquakes in the 8th century and declined in importance until it was largely abandoned from the 15th century to 1878. The city came to life when it was chosen as the capital for the Kingdom of Transjordan in 1921. Now modern buildings line the seven hills and coexist with the city's rich history. Here's our next stop, the Roman Theater. The Roman theater dates to the reign of Emperor Antonius Pius, 138 to 161 CE. The Hashemite Plaza in front of the theater was renewed in 2014. The large and steeply raked structure can seat about 6,000. The theater is now used as a venue for cultural activities and musical concerts. Steps are steep and well-worn, making it an endurance test to climb to the top. But once you're there, you're treated to a great view of the theater and the surrounding city. We're excited to see some interesting street art on the buildings on the slope of the Citadel. We'll be looking for more this afternoon. 
Tucked under the wings of the theater are two small museums, the Jordan Folklore Museum and the Museum of Popular Tradition. We only had time for one, so we took Jobber's device and went to the Popular Tradition Museum. Established in 1971, the museum focuses on Jordanian and Palestinian heritage with traditional costumes, headdresses, textiles, jewelry, and household items. Jobber arranged for a couple of his friends, a photographer and a videographer, to take us around to some of the most photogenic parts of Amman. We were starting out on our walking tour, it started to rain. We dashed into the Hashim restaurant to wait it out. We checked in with the chef to see how it was done. After some mez at the restaurant, the rain quit and we were back on the streets. This is one of the older parts of the city dating to the 1920s. It's a great location for street photography with a colorful mix of restaurants, shops, and lots of people. Street photography is about capturing everyday life in public places. The best pictures make a statement about the place. This bookseller is enjoying his mint tea and a cigarette in front of his stall. At another bookstall, it's clear that Jordanians like to buy and read books. Amazon hasn't arrived here yet. The wide variety of shops is interesting too. This is a Korean restaurant with corn dogs. Spice shops are the last vestige of a time past. I wonder how the curbside hat and scarf business is. The fresh fruit look very good today. The Jordanians have a definite sweet tooth. Guides say we have to stop at Habiba Sweets, famous for their baklava and kunafa. We each get a giant slice of kunafa. It's made with a pastry called katafi, which is filled with a soft cheese and soaked in sweet sugar syrup. Very good, but very sweet. Our next stop is Duke's Daiwan, one of the oldest buildings in downtown Amman. 1924, it was the first post office in Amman. It later became the finance ministry, and from 1948 to 1998, it was the Haifa Hotel. In 2001, it was saved from demolition by a local businessman who wanted to save the local heritage. He turned it into a daiwan, a gathering place for artists, poets, and photographers. Definitely more than a little worn around the edges. The Art Nouveau windows and doors and the vintage photographs make the stop worthwhile. Then back out into the colorful streets. These are the al Kaha Stairs, a shortcut between downtown and the Jabal al Wabdo neighborhood. The stairs are lined with small shops and restaurants. There's definitely a New Age vibe here. There are a lot of tea and coffee shops. A lot of interesting street art. And a couple of really crazy sculptures. Riviera Hotel is a hostel with space on the roof for backpackers. There are lots of cats. We wander down a few more streets before it's time for us to head back to the hotel to pack up. In the morning, we're back at Queen Aliyah International Airport, where we first landed in Jordan only six short days ago. 
And now it's time to go home. <laughs>